Welcome back, friends. So I am excited because today is the day where we put new springs on my TJ. Now, if you don't know, I have a three and a half inch metal cloak lift and the springs are just kind of getting a little worn out. I've got 60, 65,000 miles on the lift, so it's time for a freshen up. But also I'm gonna go a different direction on things and kind of change things up and make it a little unique and uh, modify the suspension for our current use because I did build this thing for rock crawling. So with that, there's more to do than just the springs. This is gonna be the first video. And actually in this video, we're gonna make a list of everything that I have to do. And we're gonna go over why I'm actually switching out the springs beside them just getting a little tired. Uh, there's a whole theory I have behind what's going on and why I'm doing the suspension work that I'm going to be doing. And I think you guys will like it. So first thing we have to do though, is we need to pressure wash the undercarriage because we were out fishing the other day and things are pretty nasty under there. We hit a lot of silt beds and stuff, and I would like to keep dirt out of my eyeballs when we're working on this, and maybe my hands a tad bit cleaner. So let's pressure wash it while it's drying. We'll make a list and kind of go over what's going on, and then we'll get into just putting the springs in and seeing what happens. So let's get into it. Okay, so here's the quick list of things that we need to do on the suspension. And honestly, this is probably gonna be over a few videos. We're gonna replace the springs, we're gonna take out all of the control arms and replace all the control arm bushings, and we're gonna take a look at the condition of those bushings. I run Metal Cloak uh, control arms with their bushings and have about 65,000 miles on them and they've not been touched. So, we're gonna take a look and see what they look like and how they fared over that amount of time. I think that'll be interesting. We're gonna do a body lift, we're gonna do a motor mount lift, uh, then we're going to do an alignment, we're going to adjust the sway bar, and honestly, I have a tummy tuck, which we might do as well. I have to decide if I want to do that, but that would be nice since we are going from a three and a half inch spring down to a two and a half inch spring to do a belly up uh, skid plate on the jeans. I already have it. We just got to clean it and uh, get some new hardware for it and put it back on. Okay, so let's talk about why I'm going to replace the springs with um, Old Man Emu springs, why we're actually going down instead of up in lift. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of what I'm doing with the suspension on my Jeep, let's go over the springs I'm adding and why. We'll do a quick lesson on springs, but these are two and a half inch Old Man Emu springs. They're rated at 200 pounds of constant load, their linear rate. On my Jeep are dual rate metal cloak springs. They're three and a half inch. And some of you guys are gonna scream at the monitor and go, hey, why are you putting a two and a half inch spring when your Jeep has a three and a half inch spring on it? You're going lower, not higher. That's very true. There's a few reasons for that. One, um, I want to, no. <laughs> One, the, uh, the metal cloak springs on my Jeep on the front are worn out. They're actually starting to collapse in a really weird way. So I need to replace them. Uh, two, I carry more weight. So I need a spring that's adjustable or that I can adjust or I can purchase that has different rates so I can figure out what I need to carry the load properly. Hence, Old Man Emu for a TJ or LJ are the only ones. You can buy them in five or six different spring rates and that lets you customize the rate to basically how much weight your Jeep has in it. And that's gonna give you the most comfortable and control ride out there. Three, I'm gonna be lowering my, my center of gravity just a touch, which is gonna help us off-road. And I say just a little bit because while I'm bringing everything down, I'm throwing a body lift on it for clearance, and so the body and everything else will go up. So um, the center of gravity will go down a little bit, but not a whole lot. Mainly, the springs will, will carry the load correctly. Also by doing that, the geometry of the drivetrain and the control arms and everything else is gonna level out. By doing that, everything's gonna be nicer. Any vibrations that I do have at highway speeds will go mostly away, because the drivetrain will be a lot straighter. 
Uh, the control arms will be a lot more flat or level with the Horizon, and that contributes directly to on-road comfort and also how the suspension handles itself off-road. If you have control arms that are sitting like this, your ride is gonna suck on-road and also off-road, your axles are gonna be moving like crazy frontwards and rearwards uh, when you go over something. So uh, there's that to be said. Now, that's basically why I'm doing all this work. I want the rig to drive better and handle nicer and the weight, I mean, you can see the Jeep behind me is not sitting level. It's sitting a little back heavy and uh, I need to correct that. And I could correct that with a spacer, but I think the correct, created, the correct rated springs are the way to go. And I'm kind of guessing here only because I don't know what the rating on the metal cloak springs are and they don't tell you, uh, which kind of sucks. All right, with all that out of the way, let's talk about springs real quick. There are a few different versions. You can get linear rate, you can get progressive, you can get dual rate, you can get triple rates, and in the dual rate and triple rate, you can get a combination of progressive or linear. What's linear mean? Well, essentially, linear means, like this spring here, as you push down on it, the rate is constant all the way through. So if it's 200 pounds per inch, this inch is 200 pounds, the next inch is another 200 pounds, the next inch is another 200 pounds. It's basically what it means. It's the same rate all the way through the spring. So because of that, it's very easy to calculate what the suspension is going to do and what shocks you need to have a comfortable ride and control these springs really well. Progressives get much, much harder. Not that they can't be done and not that they're not good springs. They just get much harder because at any given point in the spring, the spring rate is different than the coil above or below it. So up here you could have a lighter load and then down here you could have a heavier load. And because of that, um, getting shocks to match that and having a good quality ride and then everything else go on off-road is a lot more difficult and basically more expensive. Now the other two type of, sh type of uh, coils that you have, at least for TJ, are dual rates and triple rates. Basically that's like a metal cloak is a dual rate. You have one section of the spring that's one rate and then another section of the spring that's a different rate. Metal cloaks aren't really true dual rate in my opinion, only because the top rate is such a low weight that basically the springs just bind on each other, they touch each other and create like a spacer lift. And then you're really riding on the bottom rate, which is linear. Uh, the top rate is only helpful on a metal cloak coil when you go to flex, because then that coil expands and when it expands, it stops the spring from falling out, which is kind of nice, but it doesn't really do anything load wise or um, off-roading or going down the road. Because like I said, when a load is on it, they're completely collapsed. A triple rate is the same thing as a dual rate, just with an extra rate added. And I think those are probably the hardest to actually shock for um, and figure out what shock you need. So there you go. There's my quick and dirty lesson on springs and why I'm going with these ones. And basically that's because I need something to carry the load properly. And I think these are going to do the trick. Uh, Old Man Emu, are, they're known to have really great springs. I've had them on here before uh, when I had a two inch lift and uh, the ride was really phenomenal. But my Jeep is quite a bit heavier than then than it was and I went to a metal cloak spring, which is not a bad spring. It's a really good quality ride just for what I need. They're not rated properly. So now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead to figuring out how to install these things. And it's gonna be kind of a problem because metal cloak springs are so incredibly long. So let's get the Jeep jacked up, get the tires off, and get the springs out. All right, so we have everything dropped down as far as it will go. Uh, that's what's nice about these metal cloak springs is that they don't come out when they drop down. But because of that, I think I'm gonna take these uh, bump stops out, give myself a little bit more fighting chance to actually get these springs out. I have a spring compressor. I'm gonna compress them, but I can only compress these things, these springs so far. So I'm thinking if I take the bump stops off, compress them, I'll be able to slip them out a bit easier. Uh, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. All right, let's see if this will come out of here. Oh yeah, there we go. 
Sweet. Well, I don't know why, but I remember putting those springs on way harder than that. I'm not really sure. Maybe I just got better at things. Okay, here is something interesting. So, when I was crawling under here looking around, I looked at this, and this looks like a three-quarter inch spacer, which would only hurt my issue that I was having. It was the front being higher than the rear, making the front lighter. I probably could have just taken this off and been fine, but the fact is the rear is just not the right, um, it's not the right uh, weight rating anyway on the spring, so I need to change them. And this looks like it's deformed. So this is like some sort of spacer. Believe it or not, at one point in time when I very first got the Jeep, I had a two inch lift installed and they put old man emu coils on back then. And I, back then I didn't really have a back seat I didn't have a hard top, I had a soft top on it. I didn't have a winch or anything. It was super lightweight. So I think uh, the person that installed them, the shop, they put these three quarter spacers in the front to get the Jeep to be more level. Um, but we need to get them off. And so I think the way to do that is to actually unscrew this, uh, if I remember right. I don't know, I'm kind of working from memory here since I'm not the one who put these on. Maybe this comes out of here, let's see. Uh, yeah, that does. Ooh. Oh, look at that. That is not actually rust. That is a uh, Moab dirt. Huh. Well, either way, we're gonna have to clean that out. Cool, let's do some cleaning now. Here's the spring differences. Now, obviously, there's a there's a free length height difference, right? The metal cloak is going to have the longest free length out of pretty much any spring you can stick on a TJ. Uh, that's more of a bolt-on application, I suppose, not custom. But also, the diameter is completely different. This is actually a bonus here that this is a smaller diameter. It means it'll fit inside that um, the mount a little bit better. The spring perch on the upper. This was so wide that actually. Well, there's a section of this that was rubbing the perch just because it's so wide if it moves any little bit. So it's very interesting. But this, I think, is going to be nice. Now, before I put them back in, just a little bit more cleanup and painting. And I have to figure out which one is the driver's side, which one the passenger side. There are two different ones. That's what's cool about Old Man Emu. Uh, your vehicle, specifically a TJ, one side is a little bit heavier than the other. So they give you one spring a little heavier than the other or a little longer than the other and uh, that's to help compensate and balance out any irregulars from side to side, which is pretty cool. So I'll figure out which one it is and we'll wait for the paint to dry and we'll stuff this spring back in there. All right, I think everything is dry enough. Let's get this guy back together. So that goes up there first. Followed by this guy and actually throw a little bit of anti-seize on this one. That way we don't run into the same issue if we ever take this apart again. There we go. Alright. Now that guy's in there. Let's go ahead and get our spring up here. Alright, and then I'm actually going to try to shove the bump stops through the bottom at the same time just to make things a little easier here. So I don't have to go in and try to fish these bump stops through there. Okay, so that's all kind of good. Look at the spring all lined up, should be like that. And good, now you notice one thing is I have a lot of flex here, so there's actually a gap here on the spring. Now that's not necessarily a problem. One, the spring can't come out. So as the suspension comes back down, the seat will just, the spring will just seat where it normally sits. And also I'm going to put a spring root retainer on, I just don't have them in yet. And that'll stop this spring from spinning at all. It'll just kind of come loose when I flex. The other thing I'm not worried about this is because I do run a sway bar 
and I actually run the sway bar kind of tight compared to what normal people run the sway bar at. So I don't think I'll actually ever get to this point where there's this much space in here. I think the spring will definitely come loose, but uh, with the sway bar connected, this makes this system a lot tighter, which I'm okay with because it works well for me. So at least for now, I may have to adjust this, which is the beauty of the system. All right, let's tighten up this guy before I put weight on it because that could get hard. Yep, spring is nice and seated down there, seated up here, looks good. There's a lot more clearance in between here than with the metal cloak springs. They're just really fatty. Actually, there's a rub mark here. You saw me have to like clean it and paint it because it was actually rubbing into the metal. Um, I'm not really sure why. I can definitely tell you that there's gonna have to be some axle adjustments here done. But again, that's okay. I'm getting awfully excited to see how this thing sits. I kind of took a look at the front, right? Because we have it on the ground. Honestly, it's not looking too much lower than what it was. If any, actually. Okay, and this is how she looks. So, might be a little hard to tell, but she did drop a little bit. I think it's about three quarters of an inch, which actually is not too bad. The rear is a little over three quarters of an inch higher than the front. And if I sit on the back, the rear only drops about a quarter inch. That's adding about 160 pounds to the spare tire. So that should be perfect for when we add gear to it, uh, more than what we have in it right now. At least I'm hoping. Uh, the control arms are a lot more level. Let me show you that. If you can see it, it's pretty dark in there. Uh, you may not be able to see that, but take my word for it. The control arms are a lot more level than they were with a three and a half inch kit. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, I don't know with these tires if I actually need the body lift. I am going to have to go flex this thing out and check for clearances and see. If I'm going to need it, I suspect I will need the body lift just to give it some clearance in this front when I flex. And that's okay if I have to. Uh, found some interesting things. So the rear actually, you guys saw me put the A spring on this side and the B spring on that side. And same with the front here, A spring, B spring. But off camera, I did some research. Actually, I have directions for a different lift kit that use Old Man Emu springs. Um, more on that in the future and the b spring goes here and the a spring goes there on the back and on the front the a spring goes here and the b spring goes over there uh, so the a is opposite of the b the a springs are longer by about half an inch or so and the b springs are shorter uh, they're the same spring rate they're just longer and they run opposite i'm assuming they do that because of the way the tj is weighted it's weighted a little odd and also when you put your foot on the gas the rear passenger side tends to sink so I think that's to counteract that. All right, check it out, guys. I think it looks phenomenal. I love the stance and how it sits. It sits so much better. Now, I know a few of you commented on my videos before on how the stance on my Jeep was really good, and it did look cool, but when we loaded up for gear, the rear end would be lower than the front by about a half an inch, and it was just not good. See, one of the issues we were, we were dealing with is we carry a lot of gear for a TJ anyway. We've lightened our load a lot, but we carry a lot of gear for a TJ. When we do that, the front end would lose weight, meaning that we have more weight on the rear than the front, and the front end comes up. The vehicles are kind of like a teeter-totter. The more weight you add to the rear end, the more the front can come up once you get past that level stance section, then the front will start coming up. When that does, you lose weight on the front axle, which means you lose weight on your steering tires, and that can have really bad consequences like bad handling, and we were in that boat. We didn't have very good handling. Um, the Jeep was just, it, it handled really bad. So. Not, not super terrible, but it was not good. And this, I think, improved it a lot. We did a short uh, test, about 10 minutes, went on the highway, went down our dirt road, 
and it handles great, way better than it did on the metal cloak coils. And that's surprising because a lot of people I talked to said that the thing was going to handle really bad as far as bumps go because the rear springs were so heavy. And they are a lot heavier than a standard TJ spring, a lot heavier. Surprisingly, it doesn't. It actually handles smoother. I attribute that to the design of the, of the, of the Oman Emu coil specifically. And also because we are carrying the weight and I sized the spring uh, weight carrying ability to the load that we're carrying on the springs. Also, I'm running nitro charger shocks, which are perfect for these springs, it seems like. So that also helps in the comfort department. But really what it comes down to, all the components I think are working really well together now and it's a fantastic thing and hopefully hopefully it gets even better once we start doing the alignment and a few other things so there's some information about the springs and how it turned out uh, I think it's fantastic I can't believe the metal cloak springs are in, are in the condition they are in I'm very shocked about that I wonder if I just got a bad set or maybe if I just overloaded them that much I can't think so though because my rear axle isn't bent and all those components are good so I don't know I don't know, maybe I just got a bad set, but um, I will tell you it was awfully weird and Old Man Emu has been around for a long time and I love the way my Jeep looks and even, out, even how it feels right now without an alignment. So there's that. Now remember, we have a few things coming up. We're not done. This is just step one of the suspension overhaul that we're doing. The next one, we're going to look at the control arms and the bushings and that's going to be pretty cool because those metal cloak bushings are the original bushings not just the original bushings that are with the kit, but they're original to Metal Cloak. See, Metal Cloak has two styles. They have a new one with the Kevlar reinforced, and then their older one, which is what I have. And so we're gonna see, can the Metal Cloak uh, bushings actually live up to their name of being a long-lasting bushing? They have s over 65,000 miles on them now. So, and that's, that's a lot of abuse. That's rock crawling, that's overlanding, and we're talking rock, hard rock crawling when I was on 35s and I had a tummy tuck and all that stuff and a body lift. And then a lot of hard overlanding with a lot of weight on it. I mean, one time we were, we were so heavy that we were bouncing off the bump stops going down the Mojave Road. We, I had a lot of weight on this thing. We've cured that since then though. Um, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a body lift. That one is a little bit more optional. I think I still have to do it, but I'm gonna have to check clearance in the front end by doing some flex tests. And I'll bring you along for that before we do the body lift, just so you can see how I kind of do it. Uh, and we need to check. We just got to check for clearance. If it needs more clearance, then we'll throw the body lift on. Not a big deal. Cheap, easy. Uh, with the body lift, we're going to do a motor mount lift. And then from there, we're going to decide whether we do a tummy tuck or not. And that's all going to be basically what's going to come down to on the tummy tuck is what's my rear drive angle going to look like. If it's going to look fine, then I'll do the tummy tuck. If it's going to look iffy, then I'm not going to do the tummy tuck um, or the belly up skid is what I mean by saying that only because I want to keep those drive out line angles really nice and uh, I can handle just an upgraded skid plate down there and handle a little lower to the ground. Uh, we're good enough at driving for what we do. So anyway, there's that. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this whole setup so far, any concerns uh, or just comments on the video in general or things that you would like to see me do or maybe ways I can make the videos a little bit better for you, are, for you guys. I'm really trying hard to make these videos better than they have been in the past and uh, hopefully that's showing. And so I thank every one of you who likes, share the videos or comment or uh, start a discussion. It really helps a lot. It helps me understand where I need to go as well. With that, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. You are all awesome. Every single one of you. I can't believe the channel is as big as it is. I've never, I never ever thought that we'd get to this point. And I know I keep saying that, but every day I look at the subscriber count and it's just shocking to me that um, the channel has come this far and it's really enjoyable and I love doing this kind of stuff. I like working on my vehicles even though it takes all dang day and I get exhausted and I'm filthy. I like it and I like sharing what I've learned with you guys so that you guys don't make similar mistakes that I do and yeah, stuff like that. So with that, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video. I don't recommend putting your spring in like that. Uh, those rear springs, clearly, they're bent. I think this is going to be kind of easier if I get them in right. <laughs>